Hunter x Hunter, season, season, episode 20. This already feels like a character development episode for Gon. <laughs> Climb these, this long pyramid stairs. Is that dad? This already feels different. That's dad, isn't it? Nope. So far from your goal. Are you sure you even want to meet dad? Baffling X turn of X events. Why was that so heavy and dark and serious? We're getting into it now, boys. What if you finally catch up to dad and it's terrible? You find out that actually just doesn't want you. We do have some positive context clues for his father, which are that people speak really highly of him, but that seems to be mostly in terms of his capability. Do you guys ever have the experience of having this sinking feeling while you're pursuing a goal that that goal actually isn't going to do what you need it to do for you? It's just so easy to write little scripts that stem from the things that we feel were lacking. Like, oh, if only I had this thing, this is the biggest obstacle. And if I were to just have that, everything else would fall into place. But probably every single person alive of a certain age has said that and then achieved that thing and has experienced subsequent growth from that, but also has realized that's not it. That's not the full thing. I mean, I think for a lot of people, if you, if you really were to take a hard look at what is the thing you most want, what would you choose to do if anything were possible? Probably an answer comes to mind, but because of the insurmountable difficulty that we perceive in that pursuit, we aim at things that are only steps there, but feel way more attainable only to achieve them, hopefully, and then realize, well, the, the larger goal still hasn't really moved. It's still there. At the same time, realistically speaking, it's way, way better to just go for a substitute goal and to be moving forward in some direction than to be waiting around for the, the perfect thing to materialize. I think it's pretty obvious that for Gon, it's not really finding his father. There's a lot of other things about his identity and who he is mixed up in that. And on that note, to give a more positive reading of the dream, it's kind of an ideal of himself that he doesn't know he's aiming for yet. For decades, if you had asked me what my goal was, I would have said freedom. And I would have told you that would be something like freedom of time, freedom of location, freedom of activities, etc. The thing is, I've gotten really, really close to that. And terrifyingly, it became clear that one, I wasn't defining freedom correctly. The most important level of freedom is not really material. It's the way I feel spiritually, let's call it, as cliche as that sounds. And two, given all that freedom that I just mentioned, there emerges a vacuum of purpose in which I need to find something. And so amazingly, I've arrived in the same place again where I'm seeking, right? Like I'm seeking that thing, which at first I thought was freedom, turned out not to be freedom. It's meaning and purpose. Had I known that in the beginning, I could have cut straight there, right? But at the same time, I kind of had to go through that journey. It's both. <laughs> He's watching over him. Everyone's watching Go now after that that incident. All eyes on Gon. I think you were in the end of the hunter exam. I think you're done. I think you passed. Thank you, Hanzo. Good guy, Hanzo. Whoa. Yeah, I don't. I didn't even like register in all that excitement last episode that Gon made it. He did it. How does it feel, Gon? You did it. You did it. License card or Shobun Surunomo, Fuin Surunomo, Giudis. Buy Gak Surunomo, Wait, you can just buy this? <laughs> Why would anyone. Surely it's easier to buy. <laughs> buy this thing, then do all this. Then again, someone has to pass, right? That also makes it super valuable. Given a liquid marketplace for hunter licenses, I'm I'm buying it. I'm not doing this. I'm not running 100 kilometers. That was the worst part of it. Right, right. We've established that. And we're not really deterring it either. Huh. What about his Sofka? Damn, it's a Pokemon card. I get it, man. This is so cool. This is the beginning. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. You can tell how much he respects Gon and it's deserved. And he's also reading his emotions perfectly. It's exactly that kind of answer that we like and <laughs> then makes you perfect. Hmm, I think there's a lot more to Sato-san than meets the eye. Okay, well, we're gonna need a recap. I wanted to watch the whole thing. Oh, Leorio. <laughs> Why does my mind jump to concern for Leorio immediately? Right, there's only one person. That's the question. Not Leorio. Oh, he killed. 
He killed. Oh my god. He killed someone. Why didn't I see that coming? And he was riled up from going too. He was riled up from the whole power thing. It feels so obvious in hindsight. The Kalua murder Hanzo? <laughs> So what happens to Kalua now? This is not the part of the flashback I wanted. <laughs> this is... We saw this already. There's more to it than that. Gon didn't have that. I was just thinking about the task. And fear of failure. He won all of us over, except for Kalua, apparently. Or he won Kalua over, but Kalua's fighting it. Because it's he's so like self-confident, let's call it. Self-assured. But his worldview is not complete. It's very one-dimensional. Speaking of like not having the full picture off the bat, I think I talked about this earlier with Kalua. He, he reminds me of like the smart kid syndrome, where kids are told they're smart, but they have one really gifted thing. From there, there's a little sleight of hand you can play where you are always the greatest, you are always the best. Nothing has to be done, nothing has to be changed, no self-worth has to be earned just by readjusting the parameters of evaluating what worth is. So if you're told you're super intelligent, you just make intelligence the highest thing for everyone and you judge yourself as the most intelligent. When of course there are just so many more aspects of life and in fact that, that action itself is in a sense unintelligent in, in ways that really matter or unwise. So in a sense this is a personal attack on Kalua, or that's how he perceives it. This is a like a reevaluation of the scales that he doesn't want. I'm glad we're actually getting to see this. Kissing Kurpika. Huh? Or is he returning the bargain? Kurpika bargained with him earlier. Huh? Okay. Oh, interesting. All of this is irrelevant because Kalua killed someone. I guess the question is, who did he kill? Maybe Hanzo. Bodoro was pretty low ranked, if I recall. What is Sasaka up to? Not worth my time. Did Kalua kill Hisoka? Wait, wait, wait. Did Hisoka want to fight Kalua? That would be insane. I think he's just trying to save himself. Not worth my time. He took Brother? Oh, I didn't know you had a brother. Okay. Oh, he, I think he killed his brother. There's just so much going on, it's hard to even comment on it. Yeah. Yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Either this is reverse psychology deliberately or he doesn't he doesn't understand Klua. That is yeah, that's understatement. This is a challenge. Oh with my best friend going. He's also seeking, just like Gon. Hmm. 
him not being able to articulate it doesn't make it less real. He feels it. <laughs> Aww. Aww. And then he brutally murders his brother. Wow. Great brother. I mean, it's going to be a long road. He'll revert to that. He'll lean on that when emotionally threatened. I mean, it can be both. Those are not mutually exclusive. I don't know, that's a healthy part of friendship. <laughs> that's all right. Like, as a guy, I feel like there's a level of competition that undergirds friendship, but there's a way that that can be really healthy. It doesn't have to be toxic. Of course, I compare myself to my social group, but to me, it feels like a, a good thing because it pushes me to grow and my growing helps not only me, but the group and the same thing for them. Like, I'm pleased with their success, even if it is on some level, like a call that I should be doing more or makes me feel like I want to do more. Don't you want to be in relationships with people who are pushing farther than you, at least in certain areas. And isn't that one of the best ways to make friendships complementary, where you all have your unique gifts that you contribute? It's so amazing when you're in a group of people where each person will surprise the others in different ways, in positive ways. Going back to the idea that life is more multifaceted than, you know, one category like intelligence, go and represent something really powerful and strong that Kalua could use to understand or improve on. Kalua for sure has the same things for Gon. Speaking of going on journeys you don't understand, him leaving his family really feels like, you know, one of those cases where you're saving yourself without knowing you're saving yourself. He didn't even know Gon when he left his family, but he, he could feel that there was more, that this life was not it, not the whole thing for him. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There's a lot to unlearn. Part of the challenge will be giving up some of his identity, some of his self-assuredness, the feeling of safety he's developed through his, his schema of viewing the world in a very unsafe world. He'll have to revert to some earlier childhood state, though with new new information, new lessons. <laughs> Lyra always such a wild card. Yeah, Lyra said it. Right, uh, clearly, yeah. They were friends from like the first 30 seconds of meeting. Hey, you want to be friends? Yeah, we're friends. Okay. Oh, that puts a whole different light on it. I was not expecting this level of darkness from this episode. You gotta kill your brother to save your friend. I think that's illegal. Oh, he just doesn't care about the exam. Cool that Hanzo's there. それなら仮にここの全員を殺しても俺の合格が取り消されることはないよね。うん。ルール上は問題ない。聞いたか？切る。俺と戦って勝たないとゴンを助けられない。It's That's really high power leveling and respect for the brother. This also is a challenge. <laughs> it's very cocky of him. だが忘れるな。お前と俺が戦わなければ大事なゴンが死ぬことになるよ。やっちまきる。ファリオ。もう一度。俺の。<laughs> wow. That's pretty amazing. This is humiliating. Yeah, yeah. That's, he's broken. Oh, don't kill Bodoro. Oh no, he took it. Oh no, he took out his anger on him. Oh, no one wanted that for him. Uh, where does he go from here? Stick around a little bit? Hang out with Gona at least? Figure something out? Can't be a hunter, but you can still tr travel with us? Not really sure how that works. Gon is a hunter now. He can do what he wants. He can decide if Kalua stays with them or, or not. No? I mean, Kalua's broken, but... Gotta find Kalua. Gotta find him right now. He commands so much presence. This little kid walking into a room. He wants an apology. Yeah. 
自暴自棄にさせたキルアの兄イルミに怒っていた。Kind of hoping we can like 10 points for Gryffindor, Kalua into the other, <laughs> but I don't know. After killing b u t e r o I don't, I don't think that's 10 points for Gryffindor at all. Wow, that was an insane episode. I think it's definitely one of the heaviest hitting, if not the heaviest hitting, of the exam mark so far. I mean, despite how it went down and despite the current state of despair, this is the, the most hopeful I've been for Kalua because you see it in there, you see the desire in there. It's just a lot of work or not. It might not even be that long. I mean, he's already identified what it is he's looking for. Putting aside the fantasy elements and I guess the murder, I understand and relate to Kalua quite a A bit. Feels like his family definitely instilled in him from a very early age a very specific and narrow view of what it means to be good, what it means to be successful, what it means to be valuable in the world. And as a kid, that's not just an idea, that's that's your survival, that's your everything, that's your acceptance by your family, which is like a biological life or death impulse. It's your first representation of any kind of scale of evaluation about what a person is. It sets the early game. And because Kalua is gifted, he was able. To do really well in that game, and he likely got rewarded by his parents for excelling at the path they had laid in front of him. The way I think a lot of people in real life probably experience this is, like I said, with intelligence, maybe sometimes beauty, looks, being funny, but it's not just kids either, right? Like later on in life, it's money, it's who you're dating, whatever it is. It's like you're, you're playing a game that was set in front of you by other people, and that's the game you know, and at least it's a game you understand, right? It's much easier to follow that path than it would be to do the difficult work of like evaluating all of the truth of, of life and finding your role in it, but there's a point at which. Which you've invested so much into it, both you know, in terms of your effort and just your, your mentality, your mind, that any challenges to that schema are threatening. They threaten your very being, your very worth in the world, and therefore, subconsciously, your survival. That leads to a couple things, one of which is always having to establish yourself. Because on some level, you know it's not the full truth, right? Because you're, you're watching the world, and the world is complex, and you can't solve everything with your, your one talent or your one gift that you've been told is the only gift. That gets in and creates some. Cognitive dissonance. So you end up working really hard trying to dismiss all the other things as not important, you know, like Lua does with power. Like, oh, he's weak. I can beat him anytime. It also means that because you're playing this very specific game, you have to win this game always. And so you have to demonstrate whatever that thing is. Anyone who has more of it than you, because of your limited perspective, is better than you and will stir up that kind of resentment or competition or whatever. But there comes a point, I think, probably with experience, where you've just seen enough that you, you no longer can convince yourself what you're trying. To convince yourself of, you realize intelligence isn't the greatest thing because you see people having things you want and seemingly getting farther than you and other people liking them more, and you just feel miserable. And also, you're wrong about a lot of things, it turns out, right? So, what good is your intelligence anyway? And at that point, you're forced to reevaluate, and that's tough because you are giving up your lifeline to the world. You're giving up the way you thought things were. You're making your life less actionable initially. You are risking losing in the way you always perceived loss. You have to start climbing that ladder of personal value from the bottom. Almost. And you've been evaluating yourself among others. You know, you've been using comparison as a tool of value. And you realize even that's off. Because one, there's always bigger fish. But maybe more importantly, you could be at the top of something and have everyone adore you for that thing. But if it's too one dimensional, you won't be satisfied with yourself. And that's the most important thing. That's where real self satisfaction, self confidence comes from, I think. Taking intelligence, if I had the, the highest IQ ever recorded in history, I, I know for a fact that would not really go all that far in terms of what I thought about myself. In fact, My example is intelligence, right? I still do get the, the compliment that I'm intelligent, and I appreciate that. It's nice to hear. It's good to feel like people think you're intelligent, right? It's, it's social acceptance. It doesn't do nearly as much as like I once would have wanted it to, you know? And I'm also, I think, a little bit guarded from it deliberately because I recognize there's a danger in there. There's a trap in labeling myself as I'm an intelligent person and trying to take some self satisfaction from that because then I always have to prove that. It slows my learning because if I'm already intelligent, If I already have answers to things, why let in new information? Letting in new information means admitting I don't know things, which means I'm not actually intelligent, but I'm attached to that idea. Also, I just. <laughs> I watch myself and I do a lot of things that are very unintelligent. So the evidence is there. Much better, I think, is to have something in the, in the present progressive or like a goal. So rather than I'm intelligent, I like using my mental faculties to do things that are fun and interesting or useful. I'm a person who enjoys learning. That for me feels a lot more wholesome. It's not something to defend, it's a passion and it's a process. It also allows me to make mistakes. And also, I mean, it's just the truth. Like nobody is any one thing. A lot of those labels are pattern recognition for situations that require quick judgment, but large generalizations about a person's character or about one's own character. 
character doesn't really go that far in dealing with any one particular situation, which is really where life happens. So like if I come across a challenge, the question is not, am I intelligent or not? The question is, what do I do about this, this challenge? Hopefully you utilize your intelligence to handle that challenge, right? But the identity is not the important thing there. The actions are what you do, how you navigate, what you come up with. That is a hard process, a hard realization for anyone, let alone someone like Kalua with a very difficult background and also who is a literal child. Side note, this is going way back, but the Hunter exam card, it's so cool. I feel it so, so profoundly. It is just a card, right? It's a piece of paper, but it's so much more. It's a physical representation of the whole thing. The effort, the status, the meaning, the potential. It was really nice to see Gon get that. Another thing that struck a chord with me in Sato's great explanation of the, the whole thing was the idea that the image and prestige of the, the hunter profession is something that was was built from their prior accomplishments. That is not something to be taken lightly. And it is kind of frustrating that people would use that, you know, like people work so hard to build something great, do amazing things, and society recognizes the greatness of those things, yet seek to shortcut their way to that approval by joining, yet not contributing. Speaking of codes of honor, in just so many ways, we're all living in a house built by others and it's easy to take that for granted and take selfishly from it. But well, you know, well, I think of course, self-interest in this is okay to a degree and good. I think really letting that hit you, having that full perspective kind of dictates how you you have to behave, how you, how you approach the thing. And it's a greater challenge for people who actually get that than people who don't. Because for example, not only does Gon have to honor that legacy, he also has to deal with people who are not honoring that legacy. And that in a sense is his responsibility. That I think is a metaphor for society at large where you can't let it corrupt you or devolve you into a lower state for your own interest as an answer to other people doing that for themselves. There's no real satisfaction or solution in that the famous thing of well everyone else is doing it or if I don't do it someone else will. I'm still very curious to see what daily life of a hunter will be like but I think I have more faith in it and what it stands for after watching these few episodes and especially this episode than I did watching that bizarre exam.